This chef was so pathetic that he stumbled into Hell's Kitchen. Oh. My name is Dewberry. Honestly, he should have stuck to his day job at the bank. Throughout the show, starting right from the signature dish challenge, Jeffrey Dewberry wore his hearts on his sleeve. First, he admitted feeling scared when it came to cooking his signature dish, and he wasn't alone in his nervousness. It was scary to make your signature dish, and everybody just had this look like a deer caught in the headlights. Spot on, Dewberry. You see, nobody else knew what they were doing either. But things got off to an amusing start when Ramsey had a little confusion about how to pronounce his name. My first name? Dewberry. Blueberry. Dewberry. A oh, Dewberry. Yes. By the way, he's the first contestant on the show who went by his surname, and he had good reason for it. For one, Dewberry is just a fun sounding name, and more pragmatically, it was to avoid potential confusion, because there was another contestant named Jeff that season. Makes sense, right? Anyway, back to the man of the hour. Dewberry was the seventh to present his dish, and he came up with baked spaghetti. Unfortunately, it was about as impressive as its name. Ramsey made it clear that the pasta was completely overcooked. He even went a step further and laid out in no uncertain terms exactly what he thought it was. It's completely overcooked. Is it? That's just like children's food. Pretty bad. After that pretty bad first impression, Dewberry found himself on the red team. He was joined by fellow contestants Chris, Elsie, Carolyn, Jimmy, and his fellow Jeff. And he looked, um, what's the word? Excited. Chef Ramsey sprung it on us that the restaurant was actually going to open tonight. I literally just wanted to throw up. Yeah, that's it. So during the first ever dinner service, Dewberry was on garnish duty, but it went about as well as his baked spaghetti. Ramsey even had a cute nickname for him. Get out of the way. Like one big overgrown muffin. Just standing there. I'll be honest. That was pretty harsh. It goes without saying that viewers have called Ramsey out time and time again for his insults based on appearance. Sure, he's mellowed out over the years, yet it still doesn't erase how he treated heavier chefs. I've talked about this topic a bit in the past, but still. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm definitely not a fan, though. Meanwhile, Dewberry opened up about his struggles with his weight, and he had quite a bit to say. But if you saw me on Hell's Kitchen, you know how big I was, and I was even bigger than that before Hell's Kitchen. And now, this morning, I was 192 pounds. You're like, well, that's not, mm. Trust me when I tell you, if you've ever weighed 350 pounds, 193 is pretty damn good. Coming back to the episode, even though Elsie had assured Dewberry that he wouldn't be sent home, Dew wasn't any less nervous. And what happens tonight is gonna happen if I get picked and you know what? Enough. You're not going anywhere. He felt betrayed during the nomination process. And despite what she said earlier, Dewberry found himself as Elsie's second nominee for elimination, with Carolyn as her first choice. I thought uh, Dewberry showed a lack of energy and interest in what was going on today. During the plea to plead his case for staying, Dewberry emphasized that he had a broader base of culinary knowledge compared to Carolyn, hoping that expertise would give him an edge and save him from going home so early. However, when Ramsey dug into the specifics of what he actually meant, Dewberry struggled to provide a clear and convincing response. He could only offer general statements, which I'm sure didn't assuage those doubts Ramsey had. We have a great base of knowledge. Where? Just in general thing. Really? Could he be more vague? I mean, show some passion, man. Despite the initial apprehensions, though, Dewberry managed to survive elimination that night. Guess Elsie wasn't wrong after all. As he left the elimination room, he couldn't hide his surprise and shock at having been nominated in the first place, though. If the next time it were me picked, I would certainly have to consider um, that it would be payback time. After his narrow escape from doom, Dewberry took a moment for himself in the bathroom only to find Elsie there too. Not sure if it's a coincidence or the producers just wanted them to make up. Either way, in that awkward bathroom encounter, they exchanged a meaningful hug, with Dewberry acknowledging how tough the situation had been for Elsie. Wow. No, that was really hard on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Props for burying the hatchet, man. In any other season, that would have spiraled into a whole thing. Anyway, then came the squid cleaning challenge, which was a bit of a nightmare for Dewberry since he wasn't the biggest seafood fan. 
I don't like anything that comes out of the sea. Not even salt, bro? However, despite his aversion, I noticed something impressive. He was pretty adept at cleaning squid. Dewberry managed to clean two in a way that met Ramsey's high standards, which was a significant boost to his confidence after last night's scare. Dewberry, no tail on the outside. Four for the red. The red team even had their best individual performance during the challenge, and they managed to win by a narrow margin of six to five. As a reward, they were treated to a special dinner with Ramsey himself, who had also prepared the meal for them. Hey, look at you, J-Lo. A break from cooking in the dorms and being treated to some of Ramsey's food? Sign me up! Moving on, as Dewberry prepared a plate of spaghetti to send to Ramsey during prep, Ramsey surprised him by suggesting he taste it first. No, no, you don't do it. Just stand there and waddle off and nod your head. Tell me what you think. And Ramsey actually found the taste acceptable and advised Dewberry to adopt this level of quality control for all of his dishes. Mm, that's nice. That's very nice. Yeah, well, nice. Yes, I make sure everyone's like that. Yes, sir. That night, during the dinner service, Dewberry took charge of the appetizer station. He initially had a promising start with his spaghetti, but when he transitioned over to the meat station, things weren't looking quite as good. When he sent lamb and Wellington dishes to the pass, Ramsey was pleased with the lamb, but that didn't stop a problem from sneaking through. Yeah. What about the Wellington? That's al that's almost well done. Yeah, that's right. So I want it pink. Yeah, let's go. Feeling the pressure and seeking guidance, Dewberry turned to Chris for encouragement. However, things took a confusing turn when a fire broke out in a pan. Frustrated and unsure of his role beyond his mastery of spaghetti, Dewberry approached Ramsey and admitted that he was lost. I'm confused. I don't know what I'm doing. The only thing I mastered tonight was cooking spaghetti. Thank God I could do one thing. Dewberry then faced a critical moment when he informed Ramsey it would take 12 minutes to prepare the next order of Wellingtons. Ramsey's questioning left Dewberry flustered, and he openly admitted that he had no clue what was going on. I have no idea. Best answer. What? I have no idea. I am so confused. Yeah, it's weird how he just completely shut down. What's more is that he seemed to have no respect for the rules or the competition itself anymore. No. You don't care? No. You're not I interested, don't. are you? No. No, you can't cut it? No, I can't. Yeah, just like that. He then decided that it would be a fan-fucking-tastic idea to walk out of the kitchen altogether. You're useless, you know that. I am. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's it. Even if it was the first season, I'm sure contestants had at least some idea about what Ramsey was looking for in the potential winner. His favorite F word is fight, and do had none. However, something happened that changed his mind. He caught a glimpse of Elsie's disappointment, which stirred something in him. When I got ready to leave, and I looked across and, and saw Elsie and saw the look on her face and walk out, I couldn't. With newfound determination, Dewberry returned to his station, only to run face first into Ramsey's ire. Desert your section again, do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, you stand sir. there like a man and you face it. Yes, sir. Because I'm yeah. standing here in front of customers taking. Yeah, that was too wimpy on Dew's part. He chose flight. He took the easy way out. But this tough love approach from Ramsey wasn't a personal attack. He was trying to help Dewberry understand his shortcomings and encourage him to improve. He was trying to, to get me to be, I guess, better than I am, evidently. Pretty quick realization there, huh? Shortly after this, customers returned to the kitchen with their complaints in tow. And that didn't make Ramsey feel any better. Anything else? So, why don't you He then approached Dewberry to explain exactly what was going on. You can't run from the heat. Did you hear the plea, the cry of support from the team? Yes, sir. Dewberry's struggles on the meat station even pushed one of his team's tables to order pizza, leading to an unfortunate incident where Jean-Philippe got into a customer's face. Do you have a doctorate? I do have an education. Then you are less educated would, than me, so don't get in my face, buddy. Considering how hard it is to make reservations, those customers definitely didn't deserve a table in Hell's Kitchen. And they ruined it for everybody else, because Ramsey shut things down right afterwards. The red team's performance certainly didn't help things, though. As for our man Dewberry, he found himself on the chopping block. Jeff was the second nominee. 
and Dewberry had to make a compelling case to remain in the competition. Honestly, Jeff was even more pathetic than Dew, to be fair. He didn't almost walk away, he walked away and then challenged Ramsey to a fight. However, in his plea to Ramsey, Dewberry acknowledged that while he had done some decent work that night, he also recognized that his moment of contemplating quitting was entirely unacceptable. But the fact that I let everything get under my skin um, was inexcusable. Despite his plea, his near walkout, and turning his back on his team following a mistake proved to be the deciding factor. Ramsey had to make a tough decision, and Dewberry was ultimately eliminated from the competition with an emotional farewell speech from Ramsey. You're a coward, and you turned your back on your team after you screwed them. However, in his exit interview, Dewberry didn't make any excuses. He remained surprisingly graceful. I mean, I can't say that I didn't deserve it. I kind of felt like I was making a comeback, but I was not justified in walking out on my team. If you ask me, I think Dewberry's journey in the competition had its share of challenges and personal struggles. When he faced elimination, it's these moments of self-awareness and personal growth that often shape the contestants into better chefs. Some situations require walking away, while others require personal perseverance. The challenge is knowing the difference between when to quit and when to stay and fight. Like seriously, who says HK is just for entertainment, huh? There are some really important life lessons that we can all take away from the show, right? Although Dewberry didn't have a great run, his return to the competition for the last dinner service of the season was marked with some hilarious moments. He just got lucky and made a comeback because Mary Ellen didn't return. So our man here found himself as the final pick for Chef Ralph's team, following Andrew and Wendy. And nope, he didn't harbor any resentments. Instead, he had a clear intention to give his best for Chef Ralph and the rest of the team. I think for Ralph and Michael, the most important thing they can do now is really together with their team. I don't think all of us can relate to that, but I guess he's the bigger person. He asked not to be placed on the meat station, likely recalling his challenging experience on that station during the opening night of the competition. And really, who could forget? Thankfully for him and the rest of his team, he was placed at the fish station. At first, Dewberry did stumble a bit. He made a little mistake by putting fish stock in the spaghetti when he wasn't supposed to. What's that? What's that? That's a mess, right? That's garbage. Yeah. No garbage here. This is Frank and Lulu's. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I guess there was more to it than just carelessness. Things got a bit scary for Dewberry. He started feeling really weak, and you could see the signs. Dewberry, don't put it up here like you're doing me a favor when you put it up, okay? Put it up here like you mean it, all right? He even told Ralph that he thought he might pass out. It's like when you feel so tired you can't even keep your eyes open. He splashed some water on his face but was still super stressed. Dewberry actually had to leave the kitchen to sit down for a moment, leaving a worried Ralph waiting in the wings. Dewberry, don't die on me tonight, please. You can die on your own time. Yes, chef. Andrew also went to check on Dewberry in the back store and gave him a little pep talk to help him get through service. And boy, did it help. If I fall out, just kick me in the ass and push me back up. I'll make sure to, uh, what about that? Smack me in the ass to shoot up. It's crazy how even then, he was maintaining all that sass. But jokes aside, it's impressive to see that Dewberry didn't give up. He came back to the kitchen with a vengeance. I personally think that this was his redemption moment. It was his chance to show that he doesn't flee in the face of challenges anymore. Ralph gave him a list of rules to follow, like a game plan, and at that point, Dewberry knew that Ralph believed in him. Dewberry. Attention to detail. So you played it, taste it. So number six. Never settle for second. Meanwhile, Ralph's leadership was also pretty admirable. With his help, Dewberry bounced back, and this time he cooked a sea bass just right. This bass is full of love. Well, Ramsey is always giving people nicknames, this time Ralph took it upon himself to give Dewberry a pretty cool nickname. You are a rock today, aren't you, Dewberry? Yes, chef. You are Gibraltar, you are the Hope Diamond. But what did he want to be called instead? You have to listen to his hilarious reply. I'd rather you be saying I was Brad Pitt's wife. <laughs> I gotta say, dude's a legend for making Ramsey and Scott laugh. I mean, you better pay respect to his name. 
Later, things got a bit tense again when Dewberry was a bit slow with the ravioli, which started to annoy Ralph. How long are the ravioli, please, Dewberry? About two minutes. What do you mean two minutes? I asked you before, you gave me two. Where are the other two? But at the end of the day, and all was said and done, he received a big chef's kiss. <laughs> I love how everyone understood that Dewberry needed a moment to regroup. Dewberry, hold on, baby. Wash your face with some water. Wash your face with some water. Hold on, Dewberry. There weren't any mean comments, like those jerks who said he was useless or struggling because of his weight. It's great to see that he made it this far, and his teammates had his back, giving him the space to get back on track. Even on the official channel where the video was posted, the comments were filled with appreciation and support for Dewberry. It honestly felt like I was watching a completely different version of the show, one where everybody lifts each other up instead of causing drama all the time. And fans of the show thought so too. Dewberry is one of those chefs that are aware that they can make awful mistakes and would admit to it and do better next time. And you could tell that Ramsey genuinely liked him. And yeah, long after his appearance on the show, Dewberry continued to follow his passion for cooking and became the chef slash manager of the Flying Biscuit Cafe in Atlanta. But here's something interesting I found while digging through his socials. In 2016, Joey House asked him, do you think it was kind of rigged that Virginia made it to the season two finale? And this is how he responded. I think he has the same opinion as you and me. I think he definitely thinks the answer is yes. And I'm honestly with him there. You see, Virginia definitely got a lot of passes. And if you don't believe me, make sure to check out this video I made all about it. As for Dewberry himself, one Redditor asked how you would score Dewberry from season one's cooking skills. And an overwhelming number of viewers voted D. Do you agree? If you don't, you're not alone. Blueberry has a huge fan base. Just look at the outpouring of love he received. That is so wholesome. And so are his cooking videos on YouTube. It's kind of nice to see that he's still cooking, still following his passion. Yeah, he's still going strong. He used to have a YouTube channel, Flying Biscuit Candler Park, but it's been nine years since he last posted there. In one of his last videos on the channel though, Dewberry made berries. And see how pretty that is? Oh yeah, absolutely delicious. Sometime later, he started a new channel called Primal and Frugal Dewberry, where he describes himself as Hell's Kitchen survivor studying to be a primal health coach living on a shoestring budget. The channel currently has three videos and they're really worth checking out. Besides YouTube, he's also active on Instagram. He continues to share absolutely delicious food recipes, his favorite songs, and snippets of his life. You can see how he spends his evenings all cozy with his pet cat named Time and a warm cup of chamomile tea. A man after my own heart. In one of his recent posts, he shared a picture of the herbs that he's growing. From thyme, cilantro, tiny basil, and tiny tarragon, dude's got a whole garden of delicious herbs, and I'm totally jealous. Over the years, he's gotten a lot more fit. He looks 20 years younger and regularly shares insights about healthy food habits and diets to follow. Reflecting on his past self, he shared, I am not one to dwell on the past, but I don't want to forget this version of me. I was not unhappy, nor do I hate who I was, but the wasted years do sting a bit. Love the philosophy there. Embracing who you were and who you are now is huge. But here's the thing, his Instagram doesn't get a lot of engagement and that's kind of a bummer. You see, this whole social media algorithm can be a real pain, don't I know it? And it doesn't always show posts to everyone. So let's follow him and leave nice comments to let him know that we appreciate him and especially his sense of humor. By the way, I would really appreciate it if you show me some love too by dropping a like, subscribing, and turning on my post notifications. Go ahead and let me know if you think I missed your favorite Dewberry moment from the show. Also, who would you like me to feature in my next video? Make sure to drop those names below, or you can join me on my channel's Discord server for free to talk to me directly. For those of you who always look for something extra, I've also got an exclusive server just for you. Or you can also become a member and enjoy some cool perks and some exciting surprises too. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check out my next post right here. It's even better.